This world has its fair share of good-hearted people, but with that comes with its counterpart portion of those who are shady. It's easy to trust someone, but it's important to not be so gullible. Sadly, there are those who overlook any red flags and just believes in are good in people. That is just not the case sometimes, and suddenly they are held against their will. Here are their stories. Millionaire Annie George holds Valsama Mathai captive. Annie George was a wealthy owner of a 12-acre, $30 million estate which included a 30,000 square foot mansion with a helicopter pad, 24 karat gold gilded ceilings, 34 rooms, and 10 bedrooms. Looking past the mansion is the servant that looks after it. Valsama did everything a maid, a babysitter, and a cook would do. Though it may seem like an employer-employee relationship, it wasn't. Annie and her husband, who had died in a plane crash in 2009, lured Valsama to work for them by offering her $1,000 a month, which at the time was significantly more than what she was making as a servant for another family. However, the outcome was completely different. Annie required her to work 17-hour days, 7 days a week, and only paid her about 85 cents per hour. That means that they only paid her $29,000 for the 5 years she worked there. Beyond that money is the fact that she was forced to sleep inside a small walk-in closet despite all the available rooms in the house. According to Valsama's testimony, she took care of Annie's 6 children and cleaned the house on all hours of the day. She was also not allowed to eat until the family was done eating, and if they had company, she wasn't allowed to talk with them whatsoever. Additionally, Valsama never saw a doctor or dentist dentist during the five years. She said that she once told them that she was ill and Annie simply responded with, and I quote, take some Tylenol. In the investigation, it was also found that Annie induced a servant to overstay her working visa. Then one day, the National Human Trafficking Resource Center received a tip and immigration agents removed her from the home. Annie was then charged with encouraging and inducing an illegal alien and was sentenced to only home detention and probation in 2013. It is unknown if Valsama received any monetary relief from the case, and her whereabouts today were not disclosed. 7-Eleven Raid In 2013, federal agents raided 14 7-Eleven franchise locations from New York to Virginia for hiring illegal immigrants and providing them with stolen IDs. When the investigation progressed, they found something more serious when they raided the five homes which was used by the owners to home their underpaid and undocumented workers. The owners recruited more than 50 illegal immigrants from Pakistan and overworked them at a minimum of around 100 hours per week, with each being only paid $3 an hour. They were also forced to live in a modern-day style plantation housing provided with limited freedom or communication and forced them to pay rent in cash. The workers were then removed from the home. Nine owners were charged of harboring and hiring undocumented immigrants, with an additional 11 arrested on related charges. Operation Cross Country Operation Cross Country was designed by the FBI under the agency's Innocence Lost Initiative as an effort to stop human trafficking. The three-day nationwide operation took place in 70 U.S. cities, focusing on any exploitation or sex trafficking of children between ages 13 to 17. Over 100 teenagers, who were most from broken homes, were rescued with the youngest being 13. The sting uncovered 159 pimps who were involved in the commercial exploitation of both adults and children. The FBI found that the pimps preyed specifically on heavily troubled kids and used the online popular classified website called Backpage to sell the children for sex. With no support, financially or emotionally, these kids are enticed with compliments and a way to make money on their own. The 159 pimps were charged with human trafficking and other related charges. The Innocence Lost initiative has saved over 2,700 children since 2003, but it is still far from the 240 thousand vulnerable children who are recruited into the commercial sex trade each year. Operation Reclaim and Rebuild California, unfortunately, has the most cases of human trafficking compared to any other U.S. state. Therefore, the government decided to do something about it. 
Operation Reclaim and Rebuild involved federal, state, and local law enforcement task forces, which lasted from January 26 to the 28th. In this case, the detectives conducted John Stings to target those who were involved in prostitution. The detectives also posed online as juveniles in hopes to go after pedophiles. 28 children and 27 adults were rescued, with around 140 men arrested for solicitation and additional 36 other on suspicion of pimping. In total, there were approximately 474 people arrested. One of the most shocking revelations from this is a reality that 70% of the children who are trafficked come from foster care and it continuously reminds us that these kids from foster care are looking for love, someone who cares for them, and sadly, their pimps are going to give them an illusion of that love, when in reality, it is only for their monetary benefit. Even with this crackdown, a study conducted by Polaris, who runs the hotline, states, California is still struggling with the most human sex trafficking cases compared to other states at 1,323 cases reported in 2016. The entire United States had a total of 7,572 cases in 2016, with a shocking 35.7% increase from the year before. Lily Caroli and Latasha Hunt traffics a 14-year-old girl. A 14-year-old girl ran away from home on May 27, 2015. She needed a place to stay, so she was taken to a motel by unknown males, where then she was introduced to Lily and her 8-month-old son. When the young girl told Lily of her problem, Lily agreed to let her stay, but told her that she needed to make her own money in order to stay because according to Lily, and I quote, she had an 8-month-old son and a 16-year-old witness to care for. The 16-year-old witness told the victim that Lily made money through prostitution and as they went on their day buying the victim clothes, they took photos of her and told her to wait for a call. The call happened and suddenly, the man who made arrangements at the motel tried to force himself on her. The victim also met another woman named Latasha Hunt who used a wig to appear older. Latasha then took sexualized photos of the victim and posted it online on Backpage.com under the name Cookie. This was when she started engaging in sexual intercourse with several men as well as Lily herself. The reports state that Lily received about $600 but none of that cash was given to the victim. Lily was charged with human trafficking, child neglect, renting a space to be used for prostitution, interference with custody, and other related charges. Hunt was also charged with child abuse, child neglect, and other related charges. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I wanted to cover this topic because not a lot of people know what constitutes as human trafficking. It is a growing epidemic and the more we talk about it, the more we can identify a solution and or prevention. Again, thank you again for watching. Please click that thumbs up button, turn on your notifications, leave us a critique, and most importantly, if you haven't yet, subscribe. Also, if you love our stuff, support us on our Patreon page. The link is in the description box below.